Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Kashyap Chamarti. I work for Red Hat uh, as a test engineer and cloud um, department. And this talk is about nested virtualization and about Intel and KVM on KVM, essentially. So that's what I had access to. Th the reason behind was partly I was curious to try this out. And I had access to one of the newer Intel machines, uh, Haswell machine, which had um, improvements for nested virtualization. Um, before I proceed, just a quick poll. Um, I don't know how many of you use KVM here. Quite a bit. How many of you use KVM with Intel? Almost pretty much. <coughs> um, how many of you used nested virtualization? That's very cool. Do you see a real use for it? Um, uh, is it because a cool thing? <laughs> All right. Yeah, um, um, because when the patch set was posted initially by the Turtle project authors, um, there, were, there was a lot of discussion about use cases, what's valid and what's not. Is there a real use, a real need? But it has evolved a lot over the time. Anyhow, so that's a quick um, agenda, just a bit of an overview. And what are the optimizations um, that are in to resolve um, the, the bottlenecks of nested virtualization? And a little bit of configuration information and a simple initial test with all the um, latest KVM Git. Um, obviously, I couldn't test all combinations and possibilities. That's one of the biggest problems that Test matrix um, is, is you always almost have an explosion of test matrix. And then some conclusions. All right, so um, in your regular virtualization, as you can see at the bottom of the stack, you have x86 hardware, Intel or AMD, and then you have your regular hypervisor, which exposes slash dev slash KVM character device. Um, and you have your regular guests running as any other process on your host. So it's fairly um, simple. It's, it's been there for a while. So and each um, virtual guest also competes with your other processes for the resources. And KVM kernel does the scheduling aspects of it. All right. When it comes to nested virtualization, we have an, a newer layer introduced. Um, so you have your L0, there's a bit of a terminology here. Well, L0 is your level zero physical host. L1 is your regular guest or guest hypervisor. And L2 is your nested guest. <coughs> so you also have um, an L1, which is a guest hypervisor in this case, which runs its own associated guests, which are the nested guests. And by introducing this, there are some overheads involved. Before we see that, Let's see what are the use cases. Well, so one of the more popular use cases is the user control hypervisor, meaning, say there's a developer and he wants to, he or she wants to test the application in, on different distributions. Instead of going to a cloud provider asking in three different operating systems, you ask for a beefy hypervisor, and then he or she can manage her own associated guests in the hypervisor and the user control hypervisor. Well, that is more appealing to cloud providers, uh, this use case, I believe. And there are more use cases, like in you can demonstrate an entire virtualization setup in a single VM with its associated guests. Um, and obviously, there is OpenStack, like cloud um, infrastructure software, where you can run um, the entire infrastructure in a bulky guest so that it would be a bit more easier to demonstrate, and performance would also be slightly better with all the latest improvements. <clears throat> and of course, there's also live migration of hypervisors, and I haven't tested it at all, but I don't know how it's, how, if, if, if anyone has tested. So I was just curious in the audience if anyone ha had um, a, a, an opportunity to test this. Um, <clears throat> So, and, and there are more uh, use cases th that were discussed on the mailing list. Uh, uh, one is hypervisor level rootkits uh, and uh, security related aspects. 
But again, um, that's just theoretical, I guess, for now. And where is the bottleneck? Um, the primary bottleneck is the number of VM exits and VM entries, meaning whenever a guest hyper, guest, uh, an L2 guest or, or a guest hypervisor needs to execute a privileged instruction, it has to relinquish control to, to the host hypervisor. So that is a costly operation. So when I say privileged instruction, it could be access to hardware resources like time and date, maybe something like a CPU ID instruction. So, and, 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 and giving control back to the guest hypervisor is the VM entry. So this is one of the bottlenecks. When an L2 guest, a nested guest, tries to exit, a single L1, a L2 exit can, can translate into multiple level one exits. Uh, this is a term that's exit multiplica multiplication. So how are these resolved? Well, um, two new things at least have been introduced. One is with the Haswell architecture, which is upcoming. There's a feature called VMCS shadowing. It is virtual machine control structure. VMCS is a processor-specific data structure which can um, w which contains the guest state and host state, CPU, guest and host CPU states. And with VMCS shadowing, uh, L0 hypervisor can define another VMCS for your level one hypervisor so that your guest hypervisor don't have to exit to L0 and it can directly store state of um, guests in, VM, in the VMCS shadowing, in the, sh in the shadow VMCS structure. These are fairly um, ex uh, detailed aspects of in, uh, x86 Intel architecture, which I am still learning and, I'm, and I still just started to explore this. Um, so yes, so it, it, this is essentially a processor optimization at a very high level and with this Shadow VMCS, from my minimal tests, the number of VM exits and entries have been reduced. It's not like a huge performance difference, but at least 4 to 5% has been definitely um, observed. And that was for CPU optimization. Uh, VMC is shadowing. The, uh, another optim optimization is the memory level optimization. EPT has been around for a while. I don't know, Westmere architecture, three or four years. So EPT, um, extended page tables, provide uh, a second level translation on hardware. Before that, there was something called shadow VMCS. It's, I'm sorry, th th there was something called uh, shadow page tables, which was extremely slow because of the num number of times the translation has to happen from guest virtual address to guest physical address, guest physical address to host physical address, and the number of times, again, exits increase a lot more th in that case. With nested EPT, the feature of extended page tables is exposed in L1 hypervisor. So it essentially emulates extended page tables on your L1 hypervisor so that it can let L1 run EPT when, you run, when, it's, when it's running its associated nested guests. Well, it's, it's a fairly complex thing to understand for me. Um, the um, mem MMU layer while I was trying to test, and it's like a rabbit hole when I try to learn and um, uh, try to explore this. But yes, <coughs> that is a very user space level kind of understanding from um, my testing. And, and with nested EPT from, uh, from an initial test, 
there is al almost an observation of eight to uh, ten, ten times of uh, performance uh, improvement. The test is, um, you can see the result in a little while. So this is a bit of configuration. Well, these are the parameters which we have to ensure to be enabled on your host. The, the um, first is the nested parameter for uh, KVM Intel module, and then enable chat OEM CS, which is available from um, Haswell machine architecture. I don't know when it's the release, probably in a few months. <coughs> and then you enable EPT. EPT is enabled by default. <coughs> And that's just an XML snippet. I'm using libvirt in this case um, uh, and um, KVM. So to expose VMX instruction set to L1 um, hypervisor, you could use, a, use something like that, a snippet like that. Or you can expose the complete host CPU model by using a host pass-through. But I think this will, uh, uh, but this will uh, create problems when doing live migration because the target host should also be of same architecture. And this is just a libvirt invocation where when we did CPU host pass through in libvirt, you can see the QMU KVM invocation where um, it's using the L1 guest hypervisor is using uh, dash CPU host, meaning it, I mean, it's exposing the host CPU model to L1 hypervisor. It's fairly um, ugly, the K QMU KVM command line, but people are working to get it resolved. Yesterday I was there in QMU Summit, K KVM forum, I mean, there was a lot of discussion around improving these aspects. So, a simple um, workload which I tested was like uh, make a, a def config kernel compilation in 10 iterations. So just run it in a loop, clean it, and ensure data is flushed. And also drop the data from page caches so that um, it's not, um, it's, uh, the compilation is consistent, the timing is consistent, and then just output it to a file. And that's a, a result with uh, VMCS shadowing enabled and disabled across L0, L1, and L2. So without focusing too much on the numbers, you can just see at a high level a 5% improvement um, with VMCS shadowing enabled on uh, L0. The compilation time between these two is not really a large, as you can notice. But yes, uh, I confirmed this with, uh, with uh, some of the authors of nested uh, virtualization, Intel nested word authors, and they do indeed say that this is reasonable, and this was also discussed on KVM mailing list. One question. Sure. Why would you get any benefit at all from turning I might, I might be missing something. No, L0 is just consistent. It's just, it, it, it doesn't matter here. It's, it's, it's almost same. Well, it's the, the sorry? It's the of the measurement. Yeah, it's, it, it's, you don't really see any huge um, uh, difference in L0. L0 should be same. But I just calculate an average and try to write it so to the mark. To that general same, the probably, guys. same probably also for L1. Huh? Yes. But it's just an approximation, but right? you can always. But right, the most interesting case here, so we have to case it L2. Uh, sure. What my actual question would be is, uh, did you also try it with the NSP EPT disabled? EP, the same cases with EPT enabled and EP disabled? <laughs> yes, but I haven't uh, wrote them down here. I posted them on my GitHub page, uh, so we can. Uh, um, Check out the results there. Is there any downside to enabling the ability to run nested KVM? Does it slow down or add overhead to the non-nested case? Why isn't it on by default? Well, um, at least the KVM author, uh, developers and maintainers still call it experimental at the moment. 
but um, and also not a lot of people have been reporting bugs or, or um, users writing questions. So it's it's probably not enough confidence, I guess, in enabling it. So it's not an issue of overhead added by enabling it. It's purely a question of is it stable enough to be on by default. Well, yes, the, the, that's one main aspect. And, and the workloads which I have been testing are mainly Linux on Linux, no graphics whatsoever. It's just minimal um, Linux, um, core installs. So, you, of course, you'll, exp you'll expose a lot more possibilities and combinations when you see um, graphics and whatnot involved and other kind of guests like Windows. Yeah, you, there, there's probably some good reason. Well, you can try the yeah. The, um, if I've been running this basic tests for a while, like six to seven months, maybe more, with latest KVM Git, and it has been quite consistent, and I haven't seen any arbitrary crashes and such. And with and latest KVM Git, it is it has been quite decent. Um, it, so maybe you might want to give it a shot uh, with latest. K but yes. There have some people do find it a bit more unstable. Some of the Overt people, Overt project, they do run a lot of these kind of tests as well. And I've seen some reports which um, they found a lot of instability. But yeah, the, the workload which I've been doing is like fairly minimal uh, Linux core, and it does not exercise a lot of other cases. What do you mean with unstable? Does it crash the hypervisor or the guests, or what is unstable? It's arbitrary crashes, I guess, uh, when you're running different workloads. On the nested KVM level, then, or even further. Sorry, can you say that again? On, on, the, on the higher level, on the, the nested guests or the nested hypervisor? Arbitrary crashes on, on your host. For instance, I had a crash, uh, which I, re it, I only found it, I only was able to trigger it twice. Um, but that was when I tried to shut down or force power off an L2 guest. I was only able to trigger it twice, but I posted the trace anyway. Um, I asked one of the KVM uh, maintainers, does this make any sense? Uh, then I said, this does look new. Let's just post it to the list. People who are more in the trenches can um, maybe answer it. But I haven't yet um, got a response, but I should. It's been just like two weeks, I guess. So kernel people are always very busy. <laughs> And and that was a, uh, oops, yeah. Uh, this was a single make process. Um, so if you if I run more jobs um, dash four, make j four, um, then it would significantly reduce the times. Uh, did, did you try that with uh, virtual multi processor machines? Or Sorry. Uh, your, your guests were they were they SMP guests or? So yeah, uh, uh, this was a thing because to show consistency across L0, L1, and L2, I ran with a single make process. Otherwise, um, I also ran yeah, another case. One, one single process, or did you also make the, the guest a, uh, a single processor guest? SMP guest also I made. So for instance, another case where, where I ran um, L2 with two processes, L1 with four, L0 has eight. So uh, the, actually, the next case is that one. The, it's erroneously marked as single make process there, but it was a slight inconsistent, meaning all L2 was run with two processors, all L1 was run with four virtual processors, and L0 with eight. So if you run, as you can see there, on, in L2 case, with shadow and shadow topmost, and nested EPT on the bottom, you could see almost like 10 times or 1,000 percent improvement in kernel compilation. This was with make J2, so it's two virtual processors. If it was a single make, I think I just logged into the machine and saw it was something like 19 minutes in shadow on EPT, and EPT on EPT somewhere like 8 minutes and 30 seconds, something like that. And yeah, it's as you can see, with, uh, with and without uh, an EPT, the difference there. But if we, when we run more workloads, we, we will get probably more insights. And when you trigger more corner cases, 
Yeah, this was just 10 iterations, not uh, too much. Say that again, I'm sorry. Uh, when, when you try it with guests uh, with more virtual CPUs, uh, it, it worked as well as with one? Or yes, it, uh, it, it did work consistently with more virtual CPUs. Well, that was uh, quick. But some of the summary you can just say that with current KVM Git, you definitely see a, a very visible performance improvement. And the current KVM Git has. Uh, uh, patches for nested EPT and VMC has shadowing support has been there for a like couple of more months, but nested EPT has was merged in current Git KVM Git. And again, there's a lot of test combinations possible. You could only just running this make test itself. It took like quite a bit of um, uh, uh, combinations and trying to keep track of what's running where. So yeah, um, definitely more test combinations uh, need to be exercised uh, to understand more real workloads but may, may not reproduce the exact real world case. Well, yeah, I was planning to do some of these tests. Uh, um, KVM, one of the KVM developers suggested to run auto test um, inside what uh, uh, L1, as, as part of the L1, um, guest hypervisor, so it exercises different operating systems, and it's and it's also quite robust in adjusting workloads. So that's one of the cases which I'm interested to try. And we can run more fine-grained tests to understand workloads of MMU and CPU. One thing which I didn't mention at all is I didn't even get a chance to test the I/O improvements. No I/O workloads have been tested, so that's another case where. Uh, definitely more tests can be done <coughs> and and more testing with OpenStack where you can run nested guests um, your Nova guests can be run with um, KVM enabled in your level one guest and any other cases which you can dream up so if you want to try from KVM git so well it's fairly just straightforward I just wrote it for completeness sake. I checked out just the Q branch, the KVM git Q branch is where all the testing happens before they push it to next tree. So uh, that's how um, you could just go ahead if you want to try. But this should be in 3.12 very soon. Well, most of my notes, whatever I've been doing, uh, I posted there on the uh, GitHub uh, with complete details. And if, uh, if you'd like to try out, maybe you can consult it. Well, um, I think that's great. Any questions? Sure, this one. First, I'll take there. No, uh, no the qu so the question is, have you tried VM VMware on KVM? No, that's uh, one of the cases with Turtle's project where, where they tried. But I was doing this um, as a part-time um, curiosity, <laughs> so I, I didn't get time to test um, any other hypervisor uh, apart from KVM. Uh, the thing with KVM also, like I was testing some cases. And for instance, there's a shadow on EPT case, which was, uh, in that case, L2 guest was not even booting. And um, I had to p uh, bother the KVM maintainers on IRC, and then they finally figured out the issue, and then submit a patch, and then get it again. Compile the kernel on L1, and install it and running. It just just too time consuming <laughs> to try out too many combinations. I had a question about the uh, uh, last set of performance numbers you showed. Why was it that the uh, L2 was significantly faster with? doubly nested EPT, but L1 was actually faster with shadow on EPT. Why would shadow on EPT matter when you're not actually running a second level guest? In that Th this one? Yeah, the L1 was faster with shadow on EPT than nested EPT, but 
the something on shouldn't matter if you're not running a second level guest. Well, yes, one of the things which I had to investigate is shadow on EPT case that um, w when one of the persons reviewed the test, reviewed the slides, that was one of the questions. So yes, I have to get, investigate the issue. Why the, uh, sh what's the uh, bottleneck there with shadow on EPT case? There was a question there once. What about L3? Sorry? What about L3? <laughs> I, don't, I haven't tried it yet, but again, th the same problem will be there with L3, the number of exit exits and VM entries and VM exits, but I certainly have not tried. I don't know. Wh what do you envision? Any, 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 or is this just for fun? Uh, I was wondering the hardware support, uh, does it stop at two layers or uh, uh, is it just Well, I certainly have uh, not tried it, but I thought of doing it, but let's Focus on few meaningful tests. <laughs> uh, is, there, is there a limit uh, on how many guests you have? <laughs> so if uh, you have a number of shadowing possibilities or something like that. The, the Turtles project has certainly, the Turtles project is the one where they introduced the nested uh, watch for Intel. So the project certainly claimed to run L3 guests for sure, but I have not yet tried. So I do not want to say that I did try. I even, I even mentioned with L2, if there is, uh, if this mechanism, the, the shadowing mechanism is running to an end somewhere, where it cannot shadow anything anymore, so it has to do the other way around, or something like that. With L3 case, or in, in uh, just L2? No, is you is VMCS one, one, one level deep, is it only a, a single instance, or is VMCS something? Uh, Any time, one, so, uh, no, only on one, stack, on so, uh, if you have a shadow, or it can be the possibility to that, it, that it stores it somewhere and it can store a lot of them. Not, not just the deepness, but also the, the width. Yeah, it, it, it also, it's a data structure, so it uh, exposes software VMCS as well. So for each virtual machine, you can use a different VMCS, as I understand it. So it, I do not think, for instance, I was running multiple L2, four L, four L2 guests, and consistently without any crash. Yeah, so the, yeah, the, the question which I have is there is something which is really in the hardware, so that there, there are, let's say, four shadows, and if the four shadows are used, it has to go back the way it was before or something. Well, yeah, that's uh, certain. But you didn't, in, you didn't fi have such just fine means. No, yeah. I, let's see if we can quickly see. I have the machine here running. Uh, we can, and if it's accessible, it's a remote machine, it will be slow. So. We still have a bit of time, right? Um, so, the bottom uh, here is the L1, L0. So the bottom is the L0. So you can see the list. One regular guest is running. To ensure this is indeed running with VMX extensions enabled, let's grab for the QML process. So you can see it is running with CPU host. So it did expose the KVM slash dev slash KVM character device. So this machine is running here. The, this is the L1 guest. To indeed prove it is L1 guest, let's just log in from here. Where is such list? <coughs> you list the guest. Where is such console? regular guest so it's indeed a regular guest and let's check for the character device so yes and then let's see how many guests we have there One is already running. We can just start the other two. Let's just clear it. Two of them are running. So it's running fine. We can even run a make process to see if it.
No, I, I didn't catch the question quite correctly. Uh, what's about performance of fully virtualized gas not aware of EVM? Uh, These are fully virtualized, uh, the, the gas. Uh, there is no parallel virtualization. Okay. Well, yes, that, that's one of the cases which you still have to try wi Windows and other sorts of uh, guests to exercise. But yes, that certainly needs to be tested. I don't know what uh, your experience has been. Uh, uh, who, who? I, I tried to launch uh, Windows on L2 and uh, by basically the benchmark was successful. Uh, and Right. Any further questions? I think we are ahead, but thank you very much.